Hello, this is Andrew Wolf. This is my second video on the effects of cancer. In the first video, I talked about uh, aberrant proteins and how the creation of aberrant proteins because of all the mutations in cancer cells um, causes all sorts of problems. Now, in this video, I want to pick up where I left off there and start to talk about the effects of the increased metabolisms um, of cancer cells and um, talk about a little bit about the problems caused by that. So, increased metabolism. Now, remember, um, cancer cells um, divide have unregulated cell division because there are um, mutations in um, in the DNA, the genes that regulate and stop cell division. Um, when there are problems with the cells and actually there are um, sometimes aberrant proteins that actually upregulate and increase the number of um, and rate of, of cell division. So we end up with you know a single cell that um, you know through mitosis doubles itself and then it doubles itself again and then um, you know the neoplasm doubles itself again and you know this ha happens very very quickly because of the upregulation and limits to um, to the usual mechanisms that prevent um, rapid cell division, particularly in mutated cells. So we have this mass that is doubling that has a very very rapid rate of division, and that in itself increases metabolism. And then these cells also have unregulated and upregulated uh, protein production. So these cells, at the same time that they are um, dividing very, very rapidly, they are also secreting all sorts of proteins. So, and all of these processes, the cell division and the synthesis and creation of proteins require a lot of energy. So lots and lots of energy. And in fact, you know, uh, most active cancer cells use more energy than anywhere else in the body. Now, we use this knowledge, knowledge of this fact to detect very small tumors in the body using a technology called PET scans. Now, PET scans, um, what we do with PET scans is we take a little glucose molecule and we connect to it a radioisotope. You know, that's radioactive. And then um, we put it into the bloodstream, and cells that are very metabolically active and have very high energy demands tend to take up lots and lots of glucose. So one of these cancer cells that are that's highly metabolically active because it wants that because it's getting ready for mitosis and because it's creating a lot of proteins, it's going to um, tend to take up a lot of these glucose molecules. And then we put them in a PET scanner, which is designed to um, to detect the radiation that's put off by this radioisotope. And what it does is you end up with you know a picture of the body, and if you've got a very small tumor inside the body, um, that tumor is going to be highlighted, and you're going to see little spots. And this is supposed to be a picture of a lung here. You're going to see spots. Um, from all these micro tumors that are too small necessarily to see, or maybe, you know, maybe too small to differentiate from a cancerous mass versus um, versus, you know, a non-malignant, um, you know, tiny little um, little nodule that that could be malignant versus non-malignant, and the fact that it's hypermetabolic makes it uh, makes it very highly likely to be a malignancy. So, and this is all um, based on the fact that we know that cancer cells tend to be hypermetabolic because of, of these factors. So how does this affect the cancer patient? Well, um, again, you know, can't, we know that cancer patients uh, often present with weight loss uh, and, and fatigue, and we talked about uh, how the aberrant proteins can, uh, can play into that, but also the hypermetabolism, even in relatively small tumors, um, can play into that as well because we spend um, so much of our body's energy um, in feeding these tumors that it can have a significant uh, effect both on uh, weight loss and fatigue. Now the third area I want to talk about is the body's immune reaction. Now the body detects, um, the body's immune system detects um, that there is a, uh, a tumor. You know, we've got T cells that are designed to, tech, to detect non-self. 
um, and uh, they start to produce cytokines and we know in particular um, cytokines that are really important in recognizing and responding to tumors are TNF alpha and IL-1, IL-2, and IL-6. Now, and there's others as well. There's numerous ones that play a role. And what happens is um, when we have a cancer, we um, have a heightened um, immune response that um, becomes chronic. So this is, you know, sort of a chronic condition where we have heightened levels of cytokines and this causes our body to be in a hyperinflammatory state. And what does this do? Well, this has a number of. Um, this can cause um, a common presentation of cancers, uh, cancer where they can have um, syndromes with fevers and night sweats. Um, and it may lead to issues. It can contribute to weight loss. Okay, and fatigue, and, and it can actually actively um, uh, cause infections because of, uh, um, you know, one arm of the immune system can actually cause suppression of the other. Um, so next I want to talk about uh, a talk about mass effect. Um, and, you know, this, this can occur because of uh, tumor itself, or it can occur because of um, fluid or bleeding that is caused by the tumor. So. Uh, so, for example, here we'll take a um, picture of the thoracic space here, and if you can imagine, we've got ribs here along the side, and you know, we've got our you know, sort of heart and mediastinum in the middle here, and then we've got lung, and then generally, you know, our lung covers the entire space on one side of the chest. And, but if we have mass, um, we could have mass that's compressing a significant portion of the lung, or we could have mass that's actually um, compressing in on airway. So we could have an intrabronchial mass, and that intrabronchial mass could actually cause, um, you know, the mass effect inside the airway can cause lung collapse or atelectasis because air can't get to this area. Or it could actually, um, because secretions can't um, get removed um, past this mass, it could actually cause a pneumonia down here. So we could compress um, the lung itself, which can interfere with the functioning of the lung. We can compress the airway. Or we could have a mass that is producing lots and lots of fluid and we can compress the lung because we um, fill up the, the pleural space with fluid. So this would be called a pleural effusion. Or in this case, because it's caused by a mass, a malignant pleural effusion. And so all of these are going to interfere with the functioning, the, with the normal functioning of the lung. So now we have a little tiny lung here and it can't usually do its business. So what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with low oxygen levels in the blood, hypoxemia, etc. And this is all due to mass effects of the tumor. What other kind of mass effects can we have? Well, obviously, if we have a um, tumor inside the skull, then um, we end up with mass effects that can actually cause, um, you know, the, you know, we'll draw the brain here, and we can actually have mass effect that, uh, that cause a, um, you know, midline shift where we have a tumor that is growing in one part of the brain here, and we may have inflammation and swelling around that tumor, so we've got sort of fluid in the tissue, or we may actually have bleeding, you know, that comes from this, you know, that causes maybe a subdural bleed, and all of this can lead to mass effect that can lead to a midline shift. Um, and it, um, it, it can have significant implications on blood flow to the brain um, and function of the brain. And uh, this can become a, an acute situation in which you need a neurosurgeon to decompress the pressure um, within the skull because of the mass effect that's occurring. Now another type of mass effect that we may see is, for example, with an esophageal cancer 
we may have a significant mass here, down here, in, around the GE junction. And this will cause issues. If this person's eating food and trying to swallow it, it's going to cause it to get hung up here. So we're going to end up with an esophagus that gets filled with, um, with food. And when the patient goes to try to eat, he is going to experience dysphagia or difficulty with swallowing because the food is going to keep getting hung up. Um, so dysphagia is, uh, here I didn't spell that right, we got an S in there, dysphagia is a common presentation for esophageal cancer and this is due to the mass effect, the mass uh, effect because of the cancer that is in the esophagus. Okay now the last um, part that I want to talk about, talking about the effects of cancer, um, that cause the, the common um, effects of cancer are caused by the treatment itself. Now in particular, you know, the, sort of the major um, treatment modality that causes side of, serious side effects is chemotherapy. Now chemotherapy is sort of this blunt instrument that we've been using for, uh, you know, about 50 years now, which um, is aimed at targeting rapidly dividing cells because that's what cancer cells do. They divide rapidly, right? So the problem is we have a medicine that attacks rapidly dividing cells. And so this kills tumors um, pretty effectively. But the problem is it also, it also attacks other rapidly develop, dividing cells. In particular, it attacks rapidly dividing cells in our bone marrow. And what kind of rapidly dividing cells are in our bone marrow? Well, precursors to white blood cells and red blood cells. So, you know, one of the major side effects to treatment is we end up with pancytopenias. And, um, you know, chief among those are, um, are neutropenias, which leave cancer patients who are receiving treatment open to infections. All right. And of course, um, you know, chemotherapies also attack other rapidly dividing cells, which would include skin cells and mucosal epithelium. So you end up with mucositis, you know, painful um, sores in the mouth. Um, you end up with, uh, with alopecia because we've attacked the rapidly growing uh, cells in the hair follicles um, and we end up with uh, diarrhea because of the attack on the mucosal cells. Uh, and again that's all a result of the treatment. So again the, um, the major effects of cancer that we witness are due to these five um, basic elements of cancer. The aberrant proteins, the increased metabolism, the our body's response, the immune system's reactions, the mass effect of the growing tumors, and side effects of treatment, treatment itself, primarily chemotherapy. Okay, now in the next slide I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to talk very quickly about um, a list uh, of the common acute presentations that are really sort of all derived from these five elements um, that, that you commonly will witness with a cancer patient. And then after talking about these sort of common clinical presentations, I'm going to get into uh, sort of the oncologic emergencies that we have to deal with in acute care setting. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Talk to you soon.